21st of September, 1745, Charles Edward Stuart, the Young Pretender, Le Chevalier, better known as Bonnie Prince Charlie, does the impossible. A few miles north of Edinburgh, a place called Preston Pants, he and the Jacobite army beat the British. British Army, the Redcoats, he wins, he beats them. The most professional fighting force in Europe at that time. The best trained fighting force in Europe at that time. The army of Europe's superpower. The army of the world's superpower at the time. He wins against all the odds. Only Prince Charlie beats the British. So why then, just eight months later, do we have the tragedy at Dramossi Moor? Why, in April 1746, does it all go so wrong at the Battle of Cologne? Sing me a song of a lad that is gone, say could that lad be I. Mary of soul he sailed on a day over the sea to the sky. Bonnie Prince Charlie is ecstatic. He's done the impossible. He's beat the British army. It's Preston Pans is an amazing, momentous victory. So what does he do? He decides to keep the momentum going. He decides he's going to march south. He's going to march the Jacobites south to London. George II is declared an outlaw. He's going to take back the throne. He's going to march south, just as winter is coming. Fantastic victory of Preston Pans there, lads. Fantastic victory. Marvellous will go down in the history books. We really socked it to the Sassanac there. But let's keep up the momentum. Let's keep going. We can take back Britain. We can kick out that sausage munching Hanoverian outlaw King George. So I know winter is coming, but we're going south. We're going to London. Everyone, follow the Shite King. So, they march south, down the west coast, down the west coast road, through Lancashire. Then they turn east, towards Manchester, and they continue going east, until they reach Derby, where the inevitable happens, tired, cold, hungry, the Jacobites have to turn back. They turn back towards Scotland, pursued by the Duke of Cumberland, who thinks they're going to Wales, but... They turn back. Wait, wait, hold on. Derby? Why do they go to Derby? Why do they... Why do they turn east? Why not just keep going south? There is no north-south road running down the middle of England. There never has been. The two roads running north to south, one goes down the east coast from Edinburgh through York down to London. The other one likewise goes from Edinburgh, goes through Lancashire, crosses the River Mersey, between Liverpool and Manchester, and then turns towards London. Keeps going through Birmingham, through the Midlands, keeps going that way, towards London. So why do the Jacobites suddenly turn east towards Derby? Well, this is something, one of those many, many things, which the history books neglect to mention. This is Britain. 1745. 
Bonnie Prince Charlie and the Jacobites start here at Edinburgh. They reach Preston here on the 27th of November, and this is the point when they start going east towards Derby before they turn back again. Whilst the Duke of Cumberland thinks they're going over here. Muppet! Muppet! So what goes wrong? Why do they suddenly, on the 27th of November, head to Manchester and then Derby? There is a reason, and it's to do with the North-South Road. It's to do with a little place here. A small, insignificant, but strategically important market town. A small, insignificant market town which just so happens to have one of only a couple of bridges over the River Mersey. And if you control this market town, if you control this bridge, you control the road to London. The market town, its name is Warrington. And this is where the problem is. This is why Bonnie Prince Charlie turns to the east. Because of this. So what happens? They blow up the bridge. And by they, I mean the British Army. I've heard of this place before, James. Warrington, Warrington, where have I heard that place before? Oh, I know. That's the town that Cromwell kicked the shit out of in 1648 for supporting Charles I. And again, that was an issue over the bridge. That was... Cromwell gaining control of the bridge. But they're a bunch of rebel scum. They're Jacobite supporters in Warrington. 1715, they are rioting and shouting Jacobite slogans. Down with the rump. The rump being something to do with the Jacobites, but I couldn't exactly find out what. But Cromwell kicking the shit out of them them having the shit kicked out of them again in 1715. They don't learn because they're still Jacobite supporters in 1745. Down with the rump! Down with King George! Down with the English! Where's that? We are the English! So you wonder how the bridge then gets blown up. Well, they don't do it themselves. The British army gets there first. It's the Liverpool and Lancashire Militia, headed by a man called Brigadier Douglas. He marches east from Liverpool, takes control of Warrington, seizes the bridge, and blows it up. And rather than retake the town, rebuild the bridge, rather than have like a little skirmish, a little battle, another fight to demoralise the English, Bonnie Prince Charlie and the Jacobites, they turn east to Derby, to their fate at Dramossi Moor, to the tragedy of Culloden. Didn't your ancestors also build Warrington, James? Aren't they basically responsible for it? Yeah, we don't talk about that. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, we now have a Ko-fi page, which all the money 
that goes through there is going towards new equipment, towards research trips, towards doing some actual proper location based documentaries, I suppose you'd call it. So be sure to check that out and give us a little tip if you want to see more great content like this in future. Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time when I'm thinking I might talk some more about Oliver Cromwell and a monkey. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what came over me there.